Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam, and in this video, I'm going to be walking around uh, Flowerwood Nursery in uh, southern Alabama, just showing you some uh, different plants, just bouncing around um, some shade houses and uh, showing you lots of different things uh, in this video. Most of the plants in this video, I have uh, single plant videos for, so I'm going to put the name um, you know, on the screen for what it is. And if, if, if I've got a video for it, you can go and find a lot more information on it than I'll be sharing as I go from plant to plant to plant. If it's something that uh, I don't have a video for, maybe I'll stop and spend a little more time on it. I'm going to shoot this. I'm going to use this exact same intro and divide this video into you know ever how many uh, I, I think is appropriate. I don't want these to be more than like maybe 10 minutes a piece. Uh, so uh, at that point, I'll just keep breaking it down. So if you're watching part two or part three or whatever, this will be the exact same uh, in intro into it. So uh, let's get started. I haven't covered this quarter line, but I've had it on my front porch. It's been in almost a lot of the summer videos this year, but I never did a video on it. But that's a design a line, quarter line. These are great if you buy these in the spring and they just look like this all summer long. They're actually hardy down here um, in the deep, deeper south, but even those of you who are in colder areas, this is a great, this would be a great plant for just having that color uh, all summer long. Uh, what else do we have right here? A few more of those. Uh, Spider's web fats here right there. Um, here's some of the uh, um, Evercolor Carex. This is Everillo uh, right here. Um, I covered this uh, Platinum Beauty Lamandra in a uh, video. I think a container planted one last year. This is a really nice grass. You see that, you know, just how silvery this is uh, all season long. Moves around in the wind, of course, which is, you know, the nice thing about grasses like that. There's, this is a, uh, a Fats Hedra right here. Um, that uh, I think I, I can't remember if I've covered these or not. Uh, these are shade loving vines. They're half fatsia. This is a fatsia right here, and uh, half ivy. So it's kind of, it's kind of a non aggressive uh, ivy. Um, you have to actually have to physically attach it to things. It won't uh, destroy things that you put it on. Kind of slow growing in the shade, but it looks like that year round. Uh, those are uh, those are always really nice and interesting. Not something everybody has. Here's another tree forming operation going on. I showed you the tree forming of those uh, Encore azaleas, and I'll show you some finished ones in just a second. But you can see how much work goes in. When you buy a tree formed uh, you know, tree, a shrub that was turned into a tree form, it started off like this. It was a tiny little shrub that got rooted, and then they started limbing it up. And this is just the first step. They'll be in these pots for quite some time, and then they'll go into, from here, they'll go into gallon pots. To be staked up even more. This is some sort of Japanese holly. I actually don't know which, what it is. Once they cut them up like this, I don't really uh, uh, recognize what it is. It may just be compacta holly, actually, but these are on their way to uh, becoming uh, little patio trees. But the effort that goes into this is just amazing. I'm going to walk you back up toward, uh, there's more to see back here, but uh, they've got the irrigation on them. There's some aloe back here. Uh, there's a new variety of aloe that uh, they're releasing that has beautiful flowers on it. Actually, let's walk back there real quick before I abandon this, before I walk back up to those tree form azaleas. Uh, I don't want to get the camera wet, and I am getting the camera wet. <laughs> okay, but there's that. Hopefully you can get a better view of that uh, aloe right there. And there's a bit, there's trays and trays of it uh, in the back, but this is a, uh, they probably, Going to be a while this is another one of those it's a new introduction it takes a while to build up numbers on these kinds of things but you see this actually there's no irrigation here i get closer right here hopefully i didn't shake the camera around too much during that but see these flowers on this aloe yeah, this is going to be a this is going to be a pretty popular uh pretty popular variety right there there's some of these gerber gerber daisies Right here, still flowering, you know, well into October. Right there, some, uh, I think these are, I guess these are autumn ivory uh, Encore azaleas here, and uh, several others that are uh, sunburst, I think, right here with the, uh, with the pink and white variegation. There's still, still some blooming. There's some uh, sunshine ligustrum uh, right there, and uh, a few butterfly bushes back here in the, uh, the back corner that are still still flowering. I'll walk back that direction. Here's a couple uh, lantana varieties. Some of these are just trialing for, you know, see how they perform. So I came back here where these dwarf uh, butterfly bushes are, and there's some uh, dianthus here 
if you're familiar with dianthus, I don't know what variety this is, but they typically get some shade of pink flower on them in the uh, spring and you know right up through about midsummer. Foliage looks great even without them, without flowers, that blue-green uh, foliage. Here's a Tacoma. I've had uh, a couple of these on my front porch all summer long. These things just bloom like mad. Just, just never stop, never stop flowering. There's some purple daydream, Laura Petalum back here that look great. And then uh, several other uh, Encore varieties that are still in flower. I'm gonna walk back up and uh, show you those tree form azaleas now. So I showed you those one gallons in that other uh, greenhouse. Here's some, uh, looks like these are full two gallon containers here, maybe a, maybe a three gallon pot, but these are a little more mature and they've got flowers on them here in the fall these tree forms and then um, if we come right here you can see a finished one uh, right there just how beautiful that encore azalea is tree formed like that and they have a bunch of them back here i think they use these for in shows and they just take them to shows to show these off there's a white one right here that's just crazy um, look at the trunk on this thing just how long it's been that's a maybe a 20 gallon container that'd be a 25 gallon container but it's short and so i'm guessing it's about a 20 gallon container but that beautiful white encore azalea which just blooms several times a year but in a tree form really beautiful even tall even taller ones further back here so i've come outside now and i'm going to walk around uh, out here i may just skip sections because it'll take me a long time to walk past some of these things these are uh, leyland cypress uh, they're only maybe 24 inches tall they'll put on some down here on the gulf coast they'll grow some more this fall and then uh, jump out pretty quick in the spring these will be for spring sales but this is a lot of three gallon leyland cypress right here this is really uh the scale and the numbers um, at this nursery at flowerwood nursery here is just a uh, just really really amazing but uh like i say i'll turn the camera off here and jump up ahead a little bit so i told you that diamond spire gardenia is going to take a while to uh to ramp up numbers on it always does when something's new but this is all diamond spire uh, gardenias that are just newly planted from rooted cuttings into these two gallon pots and it just goes on and on and on so uh, it won't be long um, before you know they build up numbers on these but this this is gonna be an extremely popular plant, an upright, narrow uh, gardenia that uh, you know may get four feet in height and, and stay super, super narrow, has the double white flowers. And then um, over here, they've got a giant, giant crop of uh, jubilation uh, gardenias over here, which are still blooming. Sorry about my shadow. I'll try to get that out of there when I can, but the sun is up now, but there's the, uh, flowers on those and this crop just keeps going and going and going oh, but these are jubilation um, gardenias out here in the field these will be ready for spring sales i found some robin hollies in uh, seven gallon containers they've just pruned these you can see all these pieces laying down on the ground but they've just uh you know come in here and, and shaped them up uh, these seven gallons will probably leave here when they're maybe a foot or foot and a half taller than they are right now but robin is a really good one super nice dark green foliage uh, on it and uh, if we go across this to this little spot over here there's some oakland hollies right here and i like this one as well this in fact this one we're heading toward right now is a really nice plant but these are these are really nice and like i've said in a couple of videos on these robin hollies they don't they're not prickly like nelly stevens so i kind of like that about them you can see that narrow habit on them it's really nice and uh, encores in seven gallon containers uh, still blooming here well into uh, October and I'll jump ahead to the uh, next group I've talked a lot about uh, clay era different varieties a couple variegated ones that Romeo and Juliet uh, this is bronze beauty here a very long line of bronze beauty these will be look like they'll be finished probably uh, by mid-spring uh, for sale they've got a lot of uh, one gallon material out here I don't know if they're if they retail these or Will these get potted up? But these are dwarf Burford hollies. Dwarf Burford kind of grows roundish. If I if I was picking between hollies, I'd probably dwarf Burford or uh, Needlepoint, which looks similar. I'd probably go with Needlepoint. Uh, there's some uh, uh, sky pencil hollies here in uh, one gallon pots, and some of those probably will get retailed. A lot of people like to buy these one gallon uh, sky pencil hollies uh, for to put in containers. 
uh, during the growing season and uh and then some of them of course will get potted into threes and sevens i'll probably run into some big ones uh, out here at some point but this is a nice crop of one gallon uh, sky pencil hollies this is just how they grow um, upright and narrow like this big one gallon crop of uh dwarf yopon hollies that one's actually a native to the southeast but that's a low mounding one big giant group of one gallon ruby laura petalum ruby's been around for a long time probably better varieties in fact uh you know red diamond or purple diamond are probably uh, good replacements for this one that have a little better coloration but ruby's still widely sold and you can see how many they grow here uh, these are some deciduous azaleas which it's late in the season they're about to lose their leaves but these are the southern living plant collection ones that are uh, right here are the a few more of them they've uh, pruned them here late in the uh, season but these will be ready for sale uh, next year uh, i've got both of these uh um, solar flare uh, and uh, I think solar glow and solar sunbow or something like that I can't I can't remember the names of them I'll, I'll put them up on the screen these uh, these are native uh, azaleas to the southeast I'm not gonna walk up there but there must be two maybe 300 feet of those uh, tree formed uh, encore azaleas up in that area right there that look like they'll be uh, finished for uh, during the year next year I showed you those one gallon uh, dwarf Burfords over there. Here's a few three gallons. And here's a few more, just a few more uh, right there. Those are finished. Those look uh, ready to, uh, to go out. There's some uh, uh, Carolina Sapphire, uh, Arizona Cypress right here on the other side of this ditch, this drainage ditch uh, that look great. These right here, these are great screening plants. I've got these included in several uh, screening plant videos over time. And deer won't eat them. Really rugged, uh, drought tolerant screening plants, but they get gigantic. You gotta have space for these. These get, you know, maybe 40 or 50 feet over time. But uh, that's them. They've got a lot of fruit trees here, a whole lot of fruit trees. Uh, they've got peaches and uh, apples. I'm trying to see what else is up there. A lot of different apple varieties, a lot of different peach varieties that I can see. But, uh, you know, that goes on a long way. Uh, up this row and uh, here's a purple diamond Laura Petalum you can see across the top of here just these will be a crop certainly a crop for next year you can see the scale of these the number of these that they anticipate this is a great variety it really is and it's kind of a mid-size uh, growing Laura Petalum maybe maybe six a little more over time this little walk around tour won't even really do this place justice. These are encore azaleas that you're looking at here. You can see how flat these tops and how perfect all these plants are. These are definitely uh, pruned uh, mechanically. You know, it's a machine that's going across the top of them. Um, and uh, people are, you know, setting up the machine and everything, but machines are pruning these. These are, these are just shockingly beautiful, but they've got ones, twos, and three gallon uh, encores. And, you know, there's 31 varieties. so. They probably have quite a few of them uh, out here in this uh, in this big section of them. So thank you very much for watching this uh, Flowerwood Nursery Tour uh, walk around. I didn't end up doing the whole big nursery up there. The sun came up so much that uh, the camera just, that nothing looks good anymore. Well, it just starts blowing out everything. So, uh, but I don't know how many uh, videos this is gonna end up being cut into. So you're gonna see this ending and that beginning uh, on, on each of them, uh, it, probably at least three or four uh, videos that this will be divided into. But I hope you enjoyed, you know, just walking around like this and seeing some different things in a nursery and how they may be, uh, you know, the processes that they're using and the steps that you know they go through to uh to finish a plant some of those pieces that you saw along the way there probably took as much as three um you know as much as three years almost to, from a uh, rooted cutting or from you know from maybe maybe even purchased from an outside source some of it was rooted in here as i was walking around they were taking lots of cuttings on things and um and, you know they they can down here on the gulf coast they can root things uh this late into the fall and winter very very successfully uh, up there where i'm at where we have a little tougher winter our best time to be propagating is in you know the early summer so anyway thank you very much for watching these videos mm -hmm.